food prices are more push more Nigerians into poverty. What is your view on that? Yes, uh, the assumption is very correct. And uh, if the food prices are getting high and Nigerians are pushing to poverty, it is uh, from all indices and from all available facts, it is possible. Because uh, the Nigerian we are seeing today is uh, it works, you know, it works like a system. I know when a, 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 an organization works like a system, if there is a problem in one part of the organization, it's definitely going to affect the other. You know, Nigerian is like a human system that if somebody is having headache, it's going to affect other parts of the person. So if uh, there are food shortage in Nigeria and it is pushing Nigeria into poverty, then you can know that uh, it is an obvious fact because uh, many Nigerians depend on agriculture. So when there are insecurity or when there are issues that are, that are making the system to be much more unrest, you can then be assured that uh, there is going to be such system. I mean, problem in the system. So the presumption, the assumption, and what Nigerian Tribune has postulated is very possible, and that is the obvious reality now. Okay. Sanfara, another state blame banditry as the cause of increase in food stuff. What is your view on that, also? Yeah, that, that is very correct because uh, if there are insecurity, farmers cannot go to their respective farm. They are being kidnapped. They are being killed. For instance, now if we have a farm settlement and we have bandits who have invaded the settlement and those who are producing food stuff, they are being killed. Food is not going to come down from heaven. So for the mere fact that the people in Sanfara, the Sanfara government is blaming the increment in food stores, prices, and others on the insecurity and banditry, is uh, common sense justified that. Because those who are working in the farm are being killed, they are being kidnapped. So there is nobody to work on that. And from the simple law of economics, when there is a low, I mean, when the, from the normal law of demand and supply, you can therefore know that price mechanism will be regulated. So what we are seeing now is simply law of uh, 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 law of demand because there, 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 there is no level of production now. So the little that is available will definitely be expensive. Increase in almost everything ranging from fuel to food stuff. Do you think it's only the government influencing the price of food stuff? Uh, you see, if you look at uh, Chapter Two of the Constitution, where we have. Uh, the, the, the fundamental objective and direction principle of state policy. The constitution has given the government the mandate to create an enabling environment for economy to thrive. So once there is a failure on the part of the government to create an enabling environment, definitely everything will end in disaster. For instance, now when you are talking about security, it's majorly uh, in the exclusive list of the constitution. If you look at police, if you look at Nigeria, I mean, the major security apparatus is within the exclusive list. So if there is failure in security, the first person that will be held responsible is the federal government. And by implication, if the failure in, secur in security is what is leading to a crisis that people cannot go to their farm, and by extension, things are getting expensive. So the first uh, bus stop of blame is going to be federal government. And that is what we simply have. So for us to have reversal of that, let federal government live up to their responsibility as a strike in Chapter 2 of the Constitution. So if the fundamental objective and the directive principle of state policy are strictly adhered to, of course, most of these issues that we are seeing will not be there. Thank you very much, sir. We really appreciate you, sir.